This session will give a quick overview about what is a relative path and what is an absolute path. These are things that are important to know um, if you're using a file system, a Unix file system, if you're running calculations and pointing your programs to input data or output data and things like this. So to talk about path, we first need to know where we actually are in the system. And for this, we always use the pwd command, which is print working directory, and which tells us the current directory we're in. And if I do this, it tells me that I'm in my home directory. Now we can use the ls command for listing to see what's in my home directory. Okay, so there's quite a lot in there. The blue ones are directories. And so I'm going to change my directory now. And I go into the G16 directory. So CD, change directory, and then the G16 directory. Now if I type ls again, there's more directories in there. And I'm going to change directory into the tar directory. And now I'll do an ls there. Okay, now... To talk about absolute path and relative path, I do have, um, now I would like to know what's in the DRW code version 4 directory. And so I want to make a listing of that. So how do I do this? So one way is doing a relative path. So if I type PWD, I'm in home directory, then my username, G16, and then the tar directory. I know that the DRW code directory is in my home directory. So to use a relative path, I can do ls, then I can go one up, which then gets me into the G16 directory. I can go another directory up, which then gets me into my home directory. To check that, I can do an ls. And so this now shows me what's in my home directory. And so if I do this again, I go one directory up into G16, another directory up into my home directory. And now I can do the DRW code version four. And if I press enter, it should show me what's in that directory. So now this only works from the position where I'm currently in. So from the directory I'm currently in, because I'm going two directories up and then the directory I want to know the listing of. So this is a relative path. It's relative to the directory I'm currently in. Now we're going to do an absolute path. And so the absolute path will point to where I would like to go from the root directory. So if I do ls, let's do pwd first. So I'm in my home directory, and then username, g16, and then a tar directory. However, I know that the drw code directory is in my home directory. So I can do an ls, and then can give the path to my home directory, which is home, UQ and then I can give it the directory I want to have the listing of and that's the DRW code version 4 directory and if I now press L enter it again gives me the listing of the directory and so now this is now an absolute path because it does not matter where I am and I'm going to show that to you so if I CD I do an ls and now I cd into the little g16 directory and I'm going to try the thing as I did before I do an ls go one up go another directory up and drw code version 4 press enter it tells me ls cannot access there is no such file in directory and that was because this is a relative path and that path only worked when I was in the G16 tar directory. If I now do the absolute path, I do ls, home, my username, 
and then the DRW code version 4 and then press enter it will list that and that is because this is an absolute path and it works wherever I am in the file system so that's the difference so in some cases when you're doing things on a system giving a relative path might be easier or more convenient um, sometimes it's more efficient or more um, easier or secure to give an absolute path for example if that path never changes it's easy just to give that path and it will never change you never have to edit it for example um, so depending on what you need to use it depends on what's more convenient or easier or needs less change from you on a constant usage basis basically so you have to make a decision if you want to use full path it doesn't matter where you are when you're using them if you want to use a relative path you actually have to make sure that you know where you are and that's one of the most common mistakes that people have when they get an error that they can't access a file it doesn't necessarily mean that the file isn't there most often it is there however the position from where you're trying to access that file or the relative path is often not where you think it is and that leads to the error so if you're using relative path you always have to make sure that you actually are where you think you are and where this relative path will work